building your own home. What a daunting thought. The very idea of it would stop most of us in our tracks. But then there are others who wonder what would happen if they just gave it a shot and they end up accomplishing things they never thought possible. And that's exactly what happened to one inspiring woman who ended up building her dream tiny house. Hey Marie, how's it going? Good, Bryce, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, and so excited to see your home. Yes, I'm really excited you're here for a tour today. Well, me too. So, first of all, talk to me about what inspired you to build a tiny house. So, I think it was five years ago, I stumbled upon a YouTube video of a, a guy that was building his own tiny house, and I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. This person is not a builder, and he decided to build his own tiny house. And I was like, okay, I think I want to do the same. How cool would it be to be able to build your own house? So this is how it started. So you built this home yourself? Yes, I did, because of you. <laughs> That's so exciting. Yes. And talk to me about the process. What was it like to DIY your own home? It was really, really fun. Like there's so many skills that you need to get along the way, but building a house is just, you know, falling steps one after another. So anyone can do it. You just need to have the right people around you and then nothing is impossible. And you must have learned a lot from the process and also really enjoyed the process because you are now doing a carpentry apprenticeship, right? Yes, I am. And I'm building tiny houses. Before that, I was working in a lab as an environmental technician. And after building my tiny house, I was like, ah, oh, this is way too much fun. I can't go back to a normal job. So I started my apprenticeship because I wanted to do more of that. When I was building my tiny house, I was really lucky to meet two other women that were really into woodworking. And we would have those woodworking dates. They would come to my place while I was finishing my tiny house. They would have small projects and we would all like do our own thing, but help each other. And we loved it so much that we started dreaming about changing career and going to trades. So they both became cabinet maker and I became a carpenter, but we probably wouldn't have done it if we didn't support each other to do it so that was a really fun experience and probably going to be friends with them for the rest of my life and have woodworking dates but it was so awesome to have two female with me towards this experience of being a carpenter and what size is the tiny house so it's 3.1 which is the max um, for a tiny house on the road and five meters long i went with that dimension because i wanted more of like a square than a rectangle if I could do it, I would probably add still like just maybe one meter, but um, five is fine. Well, having it wider, but a little bit shorter actually gives it more of a cabin feel, doesn't it? Exactly. You, know, you, you just feel good in it because it's such a tiny square space. That's why I really like it. Absolutely. And can you tell me about the design of the home? I wanted to just be like a black square and not being too noticeable in the landscape. So it's shadow clad. But then I decided to obviously do my roof myself and I managed to put the screws in the wrong place. So I couldn't use it for the roof anymore. Uh, and then I use it on the side because um, I had to recycle my yeah, roof material. It's not a mistake. It's an unexpected design feature. Exactly. It was all on purpose. All on purpose. <laughs> and your house is really interesting, but there is so much more that you're doing around the house because you are on a mission to become self-sufficient, aren't you? I am. And I can tell you that building a tiny house was way easier than trying to be self-sufficient. So it's a cool journey, but I'm still learning. It's a lot of trial and error. And um, my favorite saying is, a uh, hundred bad days are a hundred good stories. And yeah, I've got a lot of those. Got a lot of good stories. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me about what you've set up around the house? I see you've got some really interesting stuff happening with your grey water and wastewater from the home. Can you talk to me about all this? Yeah, of course. So I've got my own grey water system. So I'm just recycling the water from my shower and my sink. It goes into a little filtering system and a few more steps. And from there, um, I use the water in my garden and in the orchard. And I also have a digester, which is pretty cool. So from my toilet and the incinerator in my kitchen, those organic waste goes into the digester and I get fertilizer at the end of that process that I can use again on trees. And I also get gas that I can cook with. 
So in this house, you're actually cooking on gas, which comes from your toilet waste. Yes, which is pretty insane, but really cool. That is super cool. It's really cool. And you're also solar powered on this home, aren't you? I am. So I've got three solar panel and two batteries, which are under my bed, but it's a hybrid system. So because it's such a small system, I couldn't afford like a massive solar system when I started my build. I decided to go for a hybrid inverter, which means I can plug my house into the grid or I can go solar if I want to. So in winter, if I'm a bit short, I can just plug my tiny house to a shed that is um, really close by. It is nice to have that option, isn't it? Yeah, I like, I like options. You'll see in my tiny house as well. I like to have a lot of options with everything. And you're collecting rainwater as well? Yes, I do collect rainwater, but obviously the surface of the roof of this tiny house is a bit small to collect rainwater. So what I'm using is um, the roof of the shed. I set up my water tank there and a little pump and I can get a lot of water from that surface. Well, I think the house looks really great and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we take a look? Yes, of course. After you. Oh, now this is just beautiful. You have done such a wonderful job with this place. Thank you. I really tried to make it cool wherever you look. There's something interesting. So yeah, lots of hours and, and love and into it and I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah. Immediately entering this home, your eyes are just completely drawn to your feature window and the gorgeous palette wall. Yeah, so my house is obviously white and I wanted something to pop a little bit more so I decided to go with a pallet wall because it's um, free and also you can kind of do it any kind of way it's always going to look good even if it's not straight so yeah that's what I went for pallet wall I guess just the easy easy way <laughs> an easy feature but a great looking feature thank you yeah I tried I think whatever you do with a pallet wall always looks good definitely the green wall there is an especially nice feature as well Thank you. Um, yes, I thought it would look really cool in the house with the pallet wall, but it's been harder than I thought to keep them alive. There's been a few losses here, but yeah, it still looks good. It still looks great. And yeah, those are notoriously difficult to keep alive. Yes. Yeah. <gasps> and there is a lot going on down this side of the house. Can you tell me how all this works? Yes. So again, love options and can't settle with one thing. So I wanted a gigantic bed, but I also wanted a U-shaped couch. So I try to combine both of them and also having heaps of storage under it is really helpful. So there is a mechanism that lifts the bed up and I can just hide things away under there. <laughs> so is it simple for this to transform into a bed? No, it's not. There is a few things to do, like you have to take that table off and then there's a box that goes in the middle and obviously you have to redo your bed. So it's not something you want to do too often, but yeah, because I Again, love, love options. I've got this table to work on if I want to. And I also have another table that I can unfold on my bed um, when it's made. That's such a good idea. Yes, it's, it's just nice to just choose in which corner of the house you're gonna work. Absolutely. And the blind that you've got there, is that a projector screen as well? Yes, it is. So I just wanted that little amount of luxury, I guess, in your house that you've got like a remote and you can just get the screen down. I thought it would be cool to have a feature where you can just be a potato couch, sit back and just press on the remote and chill. Very nice feature. And you've built in a lovely little desk here as well. Yes, I did. Um, I wanted a space to sit down and work and not be on the bed um, or on the couch all day. So um, yes, I just built that tiny space. So that's why it's there. It's really, really helpful. And. I do love how you've used a lot of really beautiful timber in this house as well. The floor is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It's recycled Rimu that I got from a friend. And um, there's something that was really important for me to have that floor because in France, when you go to an old building or something that's got character, there's always like a squeaky floor. So I kind of wanted that vibe in the house. So at the start, when I moved in, it wasn't really squeaky, but as it gets older, because I've been here for two years now, it gets squeakier and squeakier. So yeah. <laughs> as the house ages, it just builds in more of that character. Let's see if I can... Ah, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> And then behind us here we have your kitchen and this is just so cool. I love how you've got all of the storage up on the wall. Um, thank you again, like trying to make it look pretty with heaps of um, jars and eventually when I'm done with the tiny house and the self-sufficiency, I'll go zero waste as well. So that's another gigantic task as well. So I've got, I'm trying already to not use too much um, packaging, but 
sometimes it's a bit hard but I'm prepared for it so yes I wasn't too fussed about the size of the fridge so I got a really small one but what was really important for me in the kitchen was to have a pull-out pantry so I got one <laughs> I love the bench top that you've used in this kitchen too. Is this macrocarpa? Yes, it is. I wanted um, something that feels like it's not just like, you know, a square kitchen, kind of like makes it a little bit more alive. Um, if it's like timber, I guess, and if there's a live edge. So yes, I was scared a little bit maybe that it would be sharp or not really nice to work on, but actually it's, it's really good. Yeah, wonderful. Great that you've got a good amount of prep space here too. Yes, I wanted a... Uh, medium size, I guess, um, kitchen bench to have enough space to cook and also have a little secret drawer if I need extra space. And you've got your gas cooker and the oven over here? Yes, I do. So because I decided to go solar, I needed to switch to as many gas appliances as I could. But when it's really nice weather, I can usually switch to an electrical induction cooktop. So I just have it under my oven in a door. And when it's nice weather, I just cook with that. Excellent. It's definitely good to have all those options. Yeah, again, yeah. so many options. So many options. <laughs> You've got a bit of extra storage over this side as well? Yes, I added that on um, at the end because I thought it would be nice to have extra storage for shoes. And it's, yeah, very practical and very slim as well, so it fits perfectly, the space. And what's going on behind the front door here? Here we have the wardrobe space and I also have a washing machine as well as more storage. It's actually quite amazing that you have a five by three meter house and you've found room for a washing machine. Yes, yeah, so um, I didn't want to have to go to the laundromat. So yes, I did. If you need to find the space, you will. But it's not a really big one either, but it does the job. And then through here, we must have your bathroom. Yes, we do. Can we take a look? Yep. Oh, now this is so cool. I love how you've got the window above the shower there and you've even got a planter box. Yes, I wanted to do something a bit special for the shower as well. So I decided to put a little planter box above and having some cool lighting coming in through that window is really awesome when you have a shower. Like showering in a forest. Yeah, pretty much. I, was, I had that idea of like being in a jungle. I love it. Great size shower too. Yes, I really wanted like 90 by 90, I think was the smallest I could go. I really wanted to still have a little bit of a spa experience as much as I could. And you've got the macerating toilet here as well? Yes, I do. So. It just goes directly to the digester, but I also have an outdoor toilet. It's just a composting toilet that I thought would be important to have because if I've got heaps of people or if I'm working outside, it's just nice to have another option. I also wanted a bathtub, but again, there's not really any space in the tiny house, so I built it outdoor. And uh, yeah, I just finished it now, so I'm pretty excited about it. Nice. You can never go wrong with an outdoor hot tub. Yeah. So how long have you been living in the home now? Um, two years now. And how are you finding tiny house life? I'm loving it. When I moved in, the house was completely empty. I was just like, I'm going to build this tiny house in one year and then I'm going to move in no matter what. So after a year of building it, I moved in. I only had a mattress and then it took me an extra six months to finish the inside, which I absolutely love as well. And since then, yeah, I've just I've been loving it. It's hard not to be a potato catch though. But yes, I really, really enjoy it home for me is that place where you feel safe and the fact that I can understand every little bit of details around this just makes me feel like I've got a special bond with the house. It makes me feel good to be in something I built myself and I feel safe like I've got the color and the art, the texture. So I wake up and I feel really, really good about myself and I built everything around here to be comfortable and to be happy in. So it's just a perfect combination of the stuff you want in your life. And can we talk about the cost that was involved in building this home? Yes, yeah, so because I used a lot of recycled material and because I built it myself, I could get it down to a certain point, but also I went with the digester and also the solar panel. So at the end of it, it was around 40 to 45. I only have an estimation, but yeah. So considering that that includes the digester, the solar panels and all of that sort of thing, 45,000 is a remarkable result to have your own home. Yeah, I guess you save so much if you're doing it yourself. It's so much of your time, but I did it because I wanted the skills. So if you do it a lot yourself, you can save so much money. Absolutely. So what would you say the future holds for you now? So I love building tiny houses and also love teaching. So I think what I would love to do is writing a guide or 
teaching somehow people to build tiny houses because I made so many mistakes. I think I could teach a few things to people to not make those as well. So it's something I would absolutely love to do. What a great idea. Well, Marie, you have done such an incredible job with building a wonderful home for yourself. I'm so impressed with the quality of work in here, the creativity in this design, but also everything that you're doing outside of the home to become self-sufficient. This really is an amazing project. Thank you for sharing it with me. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. What Marie has accomplished with her home is something extraordinary. So many of us feel in life that there are these things that we just can't achieve. And then we set out a plan, we go about trying to accomplish them, and then we actually manage to do them. And that's exactly what she has done here with this tiny house. And now she has her own home that she's built with her own two hands. And she's setting her sights to the next vision of becoming entirely self-sustainable. And I think there's something really special in that, that it's a cliche, but it's so true that we never really know what we can accomplish until we try.